All uh, right. Well, if you guys were watching closely earlier in the week, I did already do a video about this sort of as they release a preview for us. It's patch day, and this is a big balance release which means we have a hell of a lot going on and to talk about in fact there's a two and a half hour long video up on my channel right now going over so many of the changes but today now that the actual release has come we have some other things to talk about too uh this is the release with the berserker rework as you can see that's why i'm on my warrior here cannot wait to play through some season two you see i'm here on a berserker and uh, my skill has actually changed now. Now it's become Berserk. We don't have an F1 and F2. There's loads of stuff going on there. Rev has also had some big changes. And in addition, some other game-wide things, which we didn't know until right now. So I'm here to run through that stuff with you guys. And also keep an eye on the channel as we go forward. Because what I'll, I really want to do, and one of the main things I'm excited about right now, is to actually get in and check out all the new animations. There's a new aura in the game. That would be Dark Aura. And hopefully a lot of fun stuff to see. So I can't help but wait. Here's the new Berserking and the new Decapitate. Oh, okay. And the new the Decapitate seems pretty good. All right, okay. Before I get too distracted, uh, let's have a look then at uh, what's going on. So first of all, a bit of a world versus world thing. No downstate returns. Crush your enemies or be crushed by them when no downstate returns to world versus world. There's always a mixed bag whenever the devs try something with world versus world. But I do remember this one being at least reasonably somewhat popular amongst some world versus worlders. You can doubtlessly scroll down beneath the video right now and see what people are saying in the comments about it. This event is going to run from 11 a.m. Pacific on April 26, right through till May the 3rd. While playing World vs. World during this time, you're going to earn 25% additional reward track progression. This is kind of nice if you guys haven't got your War Claw yet, as you do have to beat a reward track for that. And don't forget about a lot of the new uh, items you can get from reward tracks, like the hero stuff. That's what I'm mostly interested in. Uh, and an additional 100% world experience, so double ranks. Uh, kind of nice. You'll also gain 50% magic find. This is actually enough to encourage me to get in there and make sure I'm dinging away trying to get some more of uh, work towards maybe the legendary backpack and whatnot. Uh, next, got a bit of world polish. Uh, fixed a bug that prevented the health of the champion branded Rift Stalker in a Miss Rift from scaling up if more than five players were fighting it. And fixed a bug that applied the daily limit of Rift Stone statues per character instead of per account. So, two things here. I was in the middle of making a video on the Rift Stalkers uh, and the new current events for you guys. Obviously, I already talked about it a little bit online. Um, but I wanted to do a, a dedicated video and this bug that's now fixed really hit me If you went in with any number of players really even it felt like just a handful The bosses you're gonna fight in the current events were instantly melting on day one I don't remember it being this way, but ever since it's been kind of terrible And all the footage I've got of the event has either been really buggy and weird and annoying Or the enemies have just been dying straight away And it's just felt really kind of lame to me to the point where I stopped doing it the most recent current events i still haven't beaten it so this patch note that they fixed the scaling issue is very nice it's weird i don't really remember ever in guild wars 2 so far and i've been playing it a few years remember seeing an event where it just fails to scale up completely i've definitely had bugs where scaling is a factor you know you pull an event or a boss out of event range so then it can't detect any players there and then it starts scaling really crazily kind of like we had in triple trouble worm back in the day but just straight up it doesn't scale i don't remember ever encountering that uh so yes that's now fixed and also the second one's quite interesting uh they fixed a bug that applied the daily limit per character instead of per account so what they're actually saying is you can only get one every day instead of character swap character swap character swap I guess that makes sense. I hadn't actually participated in any of this right now, but I guess that's going to be kind of annoying. Were they always clear that it was meant to be account instead of character based? Because now it feels like all of a sudden we get a lot less each day, if that even matters. Like I said, this is an element of it I haven't really looked into just yet. But there you go. So that's it for World Polish, mostly to do with the new current events, which you may have missed. And again, I've already kind of talked about it in a video. Uh, moving on, we've got items. And a nerf, so this is a balance patch, but they never included all the details. They tend to forget about item-oriented stuff. This happened last time they previewed for us as well. Check it out, guys. Superior Rune of the Earth. The incoming healing effectiveness bonus has been reduced from 10% to 5% in PvP only, but also players no longer gain magnetic aura when struck by a foe in PvP. They've worded this weird. So basically all the nerfs are PvP-oriented. Not world versus world, not PvE. 
it is a bit weird to have the rune set not touch a magnetic ore anymore because the utility of that was really something quite pronounced that gave the rune a real specific niche. It's like, here's, a, here's an anti-projectile rune. You can't really say that about many runes. If any, uh, this would be the one. And I liked it. They created a niche. Also, when these runes were originally implemented, if we go in-game, every single... Oh, we're downstate, apparently. Every single rune, so say, for example, if I type superior rune of fire, okay, all the elemental runes used to all have auras on them. So fire still has fire aura. Water lost its aura recently, and now earth has lost its aura too, only in PvP. There's also kind of an interesting question here. They don't like, they like to change numbers between PvE and PvP, but functionality differences usually they don't go for. This is kind of a big functionality difference, in my opinion, getting rid of the magnetic aura there. But this is still a really good change, and I'll just very briefly go over why. It's because with the recent rune overhaul, superior runes of the earth were just way too strong. They gave you reflects, they gave you protection and ungodly protection synergies, which synergized with the attribute that it's given you. And on top of that, they slapped an extra 10% incoming heal effectiveness. I get that they're supposed to be a tanky rune, but they improve healing. Even theme-wise, that felt off to me. Basically, they're just so power crept that if you ever really wanted to sustain a build, and often in PvP, it, you would be called for that particularly if you're a side noder you would pick up runes of the earth and that's it you, there's no other question beyond that so i'm happy to see this nerf and uh, i like that the devs have gone with it my question now is why has this had the priority nerf over say superior rune of the monk which also was ludicrously power crept and for absolutely no discernible reason i would actually list the superior rune of the monk change as one of the worst balance changes uh, in years like in terms of I just can't understand why they did things the way that they did them uh, But this one's been nerfed and I'm very happy with that next mystic forge vendors no longer still stacks of 10 blueprints because you can Quantity select the quantity the thing for vendors came in years ago <laughs> uh, They removed this does that mean that they'll do icy rune stones and stuff later in the game? I guess we'll see if, when eventually that comes around Salvage rare Elonian weapons now have the same chance of granting globs of exo. I guess this has happened in a accordance with the unidentified gear stuff and just you know looking at loot recently and eyes of cormir can no longer be acquired by salvaging items is this going to mean that eyes of cormir now have value guys i don't think so eyes of cormir are kind of one of those expansion materials that i just cannot imagine what the devs could possibly do to eliminate this insane supply that is currently in the economy. It's just uh, a bit too far gone now. Heart of Thorns had similar uh, ones too. So there you go, you got that. Then there's the huge profession skill section, which again, I had a massive video on already, two and a half hours on all this incredible detail here. Again, you'll see I'll return to this topic as well soon as we look at the animations already sneakily while shooting this video. I've just had some fun using decapitate and cut out <laughs> of the uh, the footage here. We'll see that later. But then all the way at the bottom, the devs do continue along. Uh, structured PvP here. They talk about Jin's Dominion. Fixed a bug that prevented the skill granted by capturing the lamp from matching the skill displayed on the objective. Added a wall to further separate the team's spawn points. Now, I also have a video on this. I didn't expect the wall to be added this quickly. But yeah, those map updates have come in. And I will be getting a real hands-on on those over the next few days and talking to you guys further about that. This uh, other thing is news, though that the bug about the skill granted changing i don't really even know what that's referring to maybe you guys can help me out in the comments the other thing i find interesting here is i would have expected their main focus on Jin's dominion to have been around that that lamp mechanic and those skills because that's the defining like thing of that map and it's wonky and they're not really that great skills and people don't know how to handle them and I would expect to see the devs listening to feedback on that. Instead, the main change we've had is the wall. Obviously, this is not the only change D Jin's Dominion should have. It's still considered a beta map. Uh, so hopefully we'll see they do stuff with those skills on a later one of these patch reviews. Next, we've got Colosseum, also already described. Added a large number of obstacles around the map to break line of sight and add jump areas. Additionally, each half of the map is now more identifiable. This is interesting. On the forum post, they never mentioned that this was about jump areas. Obviously, from... The image they gave us, we could tell there was more jumping puzzly kind of stuff. And that's meaningful to PvPers, so it's nice to see there. It's it's curious they use this phrase jump areas instead of what I think the community would rather go with kite spots, but hey. And then lastly, Heart of the Mist added a small dueling area and a few practice golems to Champion's Rest. 
Now, this is interesting to me because I just very recently, last month, got access to Champion's Rest. It's an extremely exclusive place within PvP. You can only get to if you do very well over a ranked season or very well in a tournament. The next monthly tournament's in just a couple of days, by the way, guys. So if you like these changes, you can definitely check it out. I'll roll the footage since I can actually show it to you all of this new little dueling area. So there's a dueling place in Heart of the Mists for... The best of the best, the really good PvPers can actually fight there. Hopefully that that players will still use the larger brawling pit amongst, you know, regular gamers as well and people that aren't necessarily as good as them, so you get that experience. One of my favorite things in PvP right now is seeing someone with like that legendary badge and being like, Yeah, I wanna brawl with you between my queues. And if now they're just squirreled off in champions rest forever, that'd be a bit lame. But even a couple of practice golems, so you don't even have to worry about other people using your golems. Uh, I mean, it's nice, and I, I'm happy to see an update to a place that very few players can go to, but I now can. Oh, the exclusivity, guys. Right, uh, next we've got World vs. World. Players can no longer contest capture points while mounted on a war claw. Now, honestly, since getting a war claw, I can't say I've spent a lot of time flipping sentries. I used to do it a ton back when I was just trying to get as many pips as possible and maintaining my participation, but I've been zerging more recently, and I've been doing things that don't lead me there much. I do like the sound of this change though, because what it essentially does is forces players to get off of those mounts and gives people an opportunity once again to sort of gank and helps that roaming playstyle, which was really hurt by the addition of the war claw. So it might not be mean much, but it's a nice little something, right? They also have the Shadow and Heals and Escali and Heals capture points have been extended upward to cover the stairs leading down to the capture point area. I honestly couldn't tell you how important that is. Just a nice bit of quality of life, I suppose. There's a new Ritualist outfit, which we can see. This complements, uh, and you might think, Ritualist, Guild Wars 1 profession. Remember, and look, it's even here on the Gemstar. I'll show you guys. Uh, we obviously had the Primeval Dervish outfit for a while. And before even this, there was the Arcanist outfit too. Um, but yeah, they've now added a Ritualist outfit here. And it looks very much like the Guild Wars 1 Ritualist, even down to the coloring uh, you know, you can really feel like a writ if you want to. And once again, a bit like I did with the Dervish before, I feel like this is really good to have on revs for some reason. Uh, to go with it, there's the Ritualist Staff skin, so you can equip the whole lot there to see. Um, then there's the Elonian Ad Adversaries die pack, which is Beasts, Landscape, Awaken, Zaitan, and Krauk. Zaitan being thrown in the mix is kind of weird, but whatever. The new War Eternal Supply Drop Requisition is available. To help gear up for war with Kraukatoric, using this item enrolls your account to receive four weekly supply drops between now and mid-May. Now, I don't follow the gem store too closely, but this is the new kind of idea, isn't it? That you buy a thing that sort of just gives you a lot of stuff over this period. Is there an implicit suggestion as to when the next patch comes out, by the way, with mid-May there? It contains... Uh, dyes, uh, red griffin hatchlings, brown springer kits, skimmer pups, just a bunch of stuff. You can pause the video if you like. And then the week after, you get stuff, including black lion outfit vouchers, onyx and gold weapons. These haven't been available for a while, if I remember rightly, and so you actually get these back. I wonder how much the devs will actually earn off of this, because this does seem to be quite enticing on some level. And then they do explain, by the way, that it's cheapest now. And it's going to steadily get more expensive the closer to this date in mid-May comes. So they're kind of saying, get it now, get it now, get it now. Uh, for a limited time, the Enchanted Dragon Crown package returns. To welcome new players back, five transmutation charges are free. And then bug fixes. They fi fixed a gem store preview issue in which the appearance packages with backpacks would sometimes not display correctly on females. Fixed an issue that caused several chairs to ignore underwater restrictions. You could sit on some chairs underwater. That's kind of cool. And uh, the Black Lion Voucher Dealer in Lion's Arch has returned to work. The Black Lion Voucher Dealer? What's up with this? I don't remember this guy. Uh, there's also a couple of late notes which do add to the balance. So this didn't make it into my other balance video. Very briefly, Wave and Stride. Uh, they, for Elementalist, they fixed a bug that prevented the trait from granting regeneration correctly. So this is regen when you get swiftness or super speed. 
And it was working for most use cases scenarios. They haven't been explicit enough about where it would fail, but they've uh, improved that there. And then Warrior, obviously there's been a lot of Berserker changes. Savage Instinct, one of them. The trait no longer removes conditions. In addition to breaking stuns, it now provides 100% damage reduction when Berserk Mode activates. The damage reduction, and we already knew this, just to be clear, but then they've got added the damage redu reduction lasts two seconds in PvE and one in PvP and World vs. World. This second sentence was not here on the original balance patch notes which i find interesting for a couple of reasons number one obviously that means it's better in pve you'd never really think about this in pve anyway as far as i know um but it does mean that they're very pvp minded when they release those initial notes right because their default was to talk to us about the pvp and world versus world iteration rather than this one yeah, it's actually twice as long in PvE, and that's just a little bit of extra news for people. Uh, so there you have it, guys. That is a quick rundown on a patch that is mostly about the balance, which I've discussed elsewhere, but does have a few goodies. That's April 23rd. Thanks very much for watching. I think we've been defeated again. Why is it I cannot stand still safely anywhere in Guild Wars at the moment? Uh, I'll be returning very soon to talk about the animations and all the fun stuff. Uh, and until then, guys, I hope you have a good one. Don't forget, the dungeon series just started today. Uh, you may be thinking, oh, dungeons, that's 2012. It's not very interesting. I promise you, it's really interesting. I'm super proud of the work I did in that series, and I'd love you guys to go check it out. Don't be put off just because you think you already know the stuff. I promise you. I'll teach you a load of things you never knew whatsoever about those dungeons and the original developer intent. All right, guys. Catch you next time.